what's going on guys it's Tom I'm back with another video and you know what on this uh, video I wanted to talk about I've seen some stories recently and actually not just recently but I mean I remember seeing on YouTube even right guys like two three years ago talking about how they were basically overstaying their tourist visa you know for years right like you know I'm, I remember one guy this must have been like at least two or three years ago and he was right on camera and everything you know he's like you know oblivious and uh and and talking about oh yeah you know like he overstayed for like 15 years or 10 years or something crazy right and just wasn't concerned about it you know like oh they won't do anything like you know i don't know what was going on with his local you know bureau of immigration or whatever but he thought he was untouchable apparently <laughs> Um, and then recently there was a story and I didn't even watch the whole video, you know, was another vlogger did it, but I mean, you know, I've seen this story before, you know what I mean? I've heard it before. I've seen it before. And I just wanted to kind of talk about it for a little bit here. This ain't, this won't be a real long video, but, um, yeah, to me, it, it just seems like my take on it is that, you know, I guess if, if you can't afford, I mean, generally speaking, right, to extend your uh, tourist visa for like one year is going to be around five to six hundred dollars USD a year. Okay. Now you can do it, you know, two months at a time, or you could do it six months at a time. But in order to do it six months at a time, oftentimes you'll either have to go to the main branch of the Bureau of Immigration in your city, or uh, if you're married. If you're married to a Filipina and you don't have like a, a, a I think it's a, was it a 13A marriage visa? If you don't have that, you're, you're still on a tourist visa, but you're married. Then you can pretty much go to any branch of the Bureau of Immigration in your city and get a six-month extension. I mean, the benefit of the six-month extension is that obviously you only have to do it twice a year. And then you're, if you do have transportation expenses you know to go to and from the bureau of immigration to do this right well you only have to do that like two round trips a year instead of six round trips a year if you're extending every two months okay just some stuff to think about right um but my but my thinking about like uh, overstaying or whatever it just seems insane to me right for two reasons i mean like number one Listen, if you can't afford, if it's a financial thing and you can't afford like say, you know, let's just say $600 a year, let's take the top price to extend your visa, that which is like 50 bucks a month, okay? If you can't afford that, then you probably shouldn't be living in the Philippines, you know? Like if your pension is that small where you can't afford, you know, 50 bucks a month, right to extend your visa then don't don't even come here you know like, um i don't know where you would go <laughs> you might want to just not retire yet you know i mean if you're you know what i mean if you're un in that unfortunate position where you have a l very low social security or pension or whatever then uh yeah you might want to just keep working until you're in a situation where you know maybe you could retire you know somewhere right but the other reason that i that i say you know think it's kind of goofy to, to overstay is that you know you're really rolling the dice right like you're 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 because you know here in the philippines man it, you only have to piss off one person right and if you're overstaying and you know it, it, especially if the word gets around a little bit right that you're overstaying you know and yeah if everybody loves you and all that or you think that that's the case then you might be lucky, you know, enough to keep going without incident, right? But, you know, just think about that. I mean, it only takes like one person. And I'm not just talking about like one Filipino or something that you may or may not have pissed off, you know. But even a Westerner, another expat, right? You know, if you, you know what I mean? If you make an enemy here like that, you know, and you're, and you've got something, you know, that they can rat on you on, you know. And that's an obvious thing, you know, that's kind of an easy thing, right? 
you know, just, oh, yeah, this guy's overstaying, you know. Then what do you do, you know? Then you wind up like, what's the best case scenario? Because you're probably not going to be able to pay all those back fees, all those back, you know, for years and years especially. I'm not talking about just a couple months overstaying. I'm talking about some of these guys are here for a long time, you know, 5, 10, 15 years. And it's like, well, I mean, it's really a crapshoot, man, to me. It's like, I, I just don't understand it, you know? Um, because like I said, it only takes one person, you know, especially the right person, you know, that, that might know some people and, you know, uh, and, and then you're screwed, you know, and then what's the best case scenario? The embassy buys you a ticket back to the U S right. So you don't, at least maybe you don't have to come up with that airfare to go back to the U S when they kick you out of the country, out of the Philippines. Is that the best case scenario for you? You know, when you, if you do that and get caught, right. So, you know, I don't know, just to me, it just seems like it's not that expensive, you know, <clears throat> you know, for, on a, with a tourist visa. I mean, you know, if you think about it, 50 bucks a month, you know, <laughs> then you can do it, you know, you could do it for three years, you know, you could extend for three years and then you just got to leave the country once, right? You know, for one day, really, you know, you go to the closest country fly in, fly, fly back, you know, whatever. Right. And then if you can't, I guess if you can't afford that every three years, and these are cheap tickets, man, you know, you can get actual tickets, you know, I'm not talking about throwaway tickets. You know, these are actual tickets, right. For, for pretty cheap, you know, like a hundred bucks round trip, you know, maybe 150 bucks round trip, you know, to another country, you know, and if you can't afford that again, every three years, then yeah, you probably shouldn't come here, you know. So anyway, that that's really all I wanted to talk about on this one, you know. <laughs> Just wanted to throw my two cents in, but uh, because if you know, because there are, might be guys out there that are thinking, oh, I might be able to do that, you know. And it's like, mm, you could do what you want, man. I mean, you know, you don't have to listen to me, but I'm just kind of throwing out some information for you, you know. So. But that's about it, guys. I might do one more video before the new year. But if I don't, in case I don't, I hope all of you guys have a great new year. A very happy new year. And I hope that next year is even better than 2023 was for you. So, and I hope you guys had a great Christmas, by the way. Which I know I did videos before Christmas. But, uh, yeah. That's it, guys. I, uh, I'll talk to you guys later and please like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already done so. I really do appreciate it. All right, guys, have a good one. See you later.